Hey guys, it's me Carol. Welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome if you're new here. I am so excited to finally be doing this video because I'm doing another installment and in a little series here on my channel where I read celebrities' favorite books. I've done so many celebs already, so if you want to check them all out, I'll link the playlist in the cards so you guys can scroll through and see which ones interest you. And today I'm doing a celebrity that you guys have been requesting like crazy. And the celebrity we're reading like is Emma Roberts. Now Emma Roberts has played so many roles, so it's kind of hard to say which one is her most iconic one. The ones I know her from are from playing Chanel and Scream Queens. And for being the American Horror Story franchise, she has played tons of different characters there, so maybe that's where you might recognize her from. She has posted photos with so many books. She also has a book club called the Bellatrist Book Club. So I had so many options to choose from for this video, which was so fun. It's so nice to see celebrities that are readers and they're proud to be readers, which I'm just so excited. So if you guys do end up liking this video, I can definitely make a part two or three because Emma Roberts has so many recommendations. So if you're interested, just let me know in the comments down below. The first book we're going to be reading, she mentioned it in a Vogue article that I'll link in the description box as usual. And this is what she had to say about it. She said it's one of her favorite books of all time. And the book is The Rules Do Not Apply by Ariel Levy. Sorry if I said this wrong. This is a memoir, which is not usually my jam, but for Emma Roberts, I will make the ultimate sacrifice. And it's a powerful memoir about love, loss, and finding one's way. And the coolest part about this is that, can you tell? That's so cool. Let's stop rambling and let's get on with this video, shall we? Let's do this. I just finished reading The Rules Do Not Apply. It's a very powerful and sad story, sadly. Things do not work out for her and everything goes downhill. I did have, I don't want to say a fun time because this is a really sad story, but it was a really interesting time. I really enjoyed reading the story. Levi writes in such a beautiful way. The book was not tiring to get through, even though it's talking about such sad things. You don't get discouraged or dismotivated. You still want to keep reading. You still want to find out what happened. I do think this didn't add much to my life personally because I am not married. I don't have children, but it was a really interesting story. And even though it didn't change my life, it was really important to read. And I'm glad I read this because this is such a popular and loved book that I'm glad I was able to finish this. She has taken grief and sadness and pain and turned it into something beautiful and just turned it into art. I'm really glad she, she was able to write this memoir and that she was able to express herself. So I really enjoy this one. I don't really like to read memoirs, especially because I don't feel like I have the right to rate someone's experience in life. But if I were to rate this book for the sake of this video, I would give it five stars. If you're not used to this genre, this is a good book to start with, even though it's really sad. Make sure to check out the trigger warnings as well. It's unputdownable, and I do recommend you start with this one if you're interested in reading memoirs. And I'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, I'm back. The book I'm going to be reading today was mentioned in the same article as the first book, and this is what she had to say about it. It's apparently one of her favorite books of all time. She rereads it every single year and she always buys books from this author. There are a couple of pictures of her reading other books by this author, but the one I chose is the one that sounded most interesting to me and the one she mentioned in the article. Slouching Towards Bettelheim. Sorry if I said this wrong. It's by John Didion. John Didion is a really well-known classic author. She has written so many really popular books. It's the essential portrait of America, particularly California in the 60s. Love to see it, okay. It focuses on subjects as John Wayne, Howard Hughes, growing up in California, 
ruminating on the nature of good and evil in a Death Valley motel room, and especially the essence of San Francisco, the heart of the counterculture. That sounds really interesting, actually. I think it's in the essay form, which is fun. Let's do this. <laughs> Wish me luck, you guys. <laughs> towards Bettelheim, Bettelheim. Sorry if I said that wrong. I really enjoy this book. It talks about living in California in 1960s, but I did find it a bit harder to get through because of the writing style. John Didion has an amazing, such unique writing style. Every single one of her essays were just so beautifully written and so rich. But it was a bit harder for me to understand what was going on. As English is not my first language, I did struggle a bit to get through it. And I did struggle to fully understand every single one of the essays. But I did enjoy my time reading it. I think one thing we can tell already about Emma Roberts' reading taste by only reading two of her favorite books is that she loves this sort of writing style where the author can literally be talking about nothing. But the way it's written, it's what makes it special. So in both of the books we've read so far, they're talking about their life and their experiences. And it's something that some people might find boring, but the writing style is what makes this, these stories so unique and so meaningful and powerful. And I think that's exactly why Emma Roberts enjoys reading these books this much. It's because they are very similar in the sentence structure and the way the sentence just flows and has a sort of musicality to it which is really interesting and I don't think I've ever read books like this before. I've read books where I thought it was beautiful but for this one you can tell how much thought the author put into every single one of their sentences which is just insane and it must have been so hard to do. I wish I could write as beautifully as John Didion does. That was an incredible experience as a reader. I can't even imagine what it might, it might be like for her to write those things. In the end, I'm gonna give this four stars because even though it was amazing, I do personally still prefer the other book better. So yeah, we just finished this one and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow when we'll be reading a thriller book, which is so exciting. And I can't wait to see which types of thriller Emma Roberts reads and if her taste in those books are similar to mine. So yeah, I'll see you guys soon. I'm back for the final book we're going to be reading for this video. This book is a thriller and it's a very well-known thriller as well. A book that has been on my TBR for quite a while now, but I just never got the courage to read it because I was scared of it just disappointing me. So the book was mentioned in the same article as all of these books. Vogue, you saved this video. Literally, thank you. This is what she had to say about it, and the book is The Shooter Island. So, um, I have it here on my Kindle, and let me read you the description of this book. Because I just bought it without even knowing what it's about. Don't do that, kids. Don't, don't try this at home. So this is what it says. The year is 1954. U.S. Marshal Teddy Daniels and his partner Chuck have come to Shooter Island, home of the hospital for the criminally insane. Love it to investigate the disappearance of a patient. Multiple murderess Rachel Solando is loose somewhere on this remote and barren island, despite having been kept in a locked cell under constant surveillance. As a killer hurricane bears relentlessly down on them, a strange case takes on even darker, more sinister shades. With hints of radical experimentation, horrifying surgeries, and lethal counter moves made in the cause of a covert shadow war. No one is going to escape Shutter Island uns unscathed, unscathed, uns, uns I, I don't know how to read. Because nothing at Eshel Cliff Hospital is what it seems. But then, neither is Teddy Daniels. That sounds amazing! This is one of my friends Caroline's 
favorite book of all time and we do have pretty similar reading taste so that's fun but i do have other friends here on booktube that have read this and found it extremely boring so we'll see how it goes hopefully i'll love it i really want to though so yeah let's do this i'll take you guys along with me and we'll see how it goes That was a real- oh, hello. <laughs> Say hi. Hello. That was a roller coaster, you guys. Oh my god. Um, I think it's the same ending as the movie, so if you've watched the movie, you know how it goes. <gasps> that was one of the best thrillers I've ever read. I didn't find it boring at all. I know some people thought it was boring. I finished it in like two hours. And that's like a heavy book to get through. Like it's chunky. So what? I'm gonna give it five stars. It was really good. The plot twist was insane. <laughs> I loved it. I can't wait to watch the movie. I wanna watch it soon. Now let's just quickly go over my overall thoughts and what I think of Emma Roberts' reading taste. I think she reads the literary fiction books because of the writing style and because they are just comforting reads, even though they're talking about such sad things. The way those writers write feels like a warm hug. And it feels like they're keeping you company. And it feels like the characters are there for you and you're best friends with them. So I do think she reads those books to feel connected with these characters and to feel like she's a part of their lives which is incredible and i had a great time with those books too that was amazing as for her thriller taste the two thrillers she's recommended were the shining and shutter island both of them because i've read the shining are very similar in their writing style because they are very descriptive of the ambiance and surroundings so in this book, it, they described the island a lot. It felt real and it felt like you were in the island with them. And the same thing happens in The Shining by Stephen King because Stephen King describes the Overlook Hotel in a lot of details and you do feel like you're in the hotel with the characters. So I do think she likes that aspect in thrillers where the plot is less character-based and more ambiance based if that makes sense and both books make you really tense and make you really nervous throughout it all so you're struggling with the characters whenever the characters feel anxious you feel the anxiety too so i think that's another aspect that she really enjoys in thrillers is being transported into that story and feeling the fear firsthand as if you were one of the characters which is amazing i feel like out of all the celebrities i've read this was the one that i resonated with the most and the one i enjoyed the most so i definitely want to do a part two if you guys are interested just let me know but yeah, I had a lot of fun. Emma Roberts is the queen. And now I love her even more now that I know she has a good reading taste and that we can trust her recommendations, which makes me so, so happy. Let me know down below which celebrity I should do next. I would love to know. I'm planning on making a video like this every single week. So hopefully I'll get to your celeb very, very soon. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below to be part of this wonderful family. I would love to have you here. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.